Hi, Anna. Nice to have you back here again. So this collection called The Fairy Tales on the Heart, written by you with a very specific purpose in mind. Tell us about it. This book was designed to highlight a few technical aspects for beginners. So there's pieces like Rapunzel's Hair, which is a tune based around three-fingered triads in both hands. And it, it's a lovely little performance piece too. I think everyone should have a piece that just ripples up and down. Um, it's the sort of piece that makes the audience go, Ooh, and get all calm and, and really appreciate some of the beautiful tones that we can get on the harp. And there's other pieces that highlight uh, interval movement and um, practicing the same interval repeatedly, but with an interesting tune line or an interesting accompaniment to go with it. Um, there's a piece called the Hare and the Tortoise, which is all octaves in the bass hand, and it just stays on the F octave the whole time. So you're playing an F with your fourth finger, an F with your thumb, and then the tune changes at the top. And it's a really good practice just to get that movement going and build the muscular memory in, in your hand here that, will, that you'll use in many, many, many other pieces down the track. And when we think about uh, beginner music, we often think about something that is quite simple. And while I think this book is simple, there are still, like you said, interesting melody lines. And how, what would you say to someone who is relatively new to the harp, we're trying to uh, figure out the technical things and also trying to make the song sound melodic. How would you gradually sort of build up yourself in learning through a piece from a book like this? I start at the beginning of this book. I think that's the, um, the key. The easier ones are at the beginning. Take it slowly. Get to know a piece really, really well before you move on from it and acknowledge what it is that you're actually learning there. Um, I know like the hare and the tortoise with the octaves in the bottom, it might look a little bit boring, but you've got to sit and wonder why the composer, in this case me, did this exercise and um, it, it was for a student who really needed to get the octaves in his left hand sorted. And by the end of the piece, by the time he had practice the left hand by itself, practice the right hand by itself, put the both together. He wasn't having to think about his left hand anymore. It, was, it had just become automatic and that muscular memory had, had moved in and taken hold. There's another little piece in here. I'm just having a quick flip through. Okay, Mother Goose, where there is some hand over hand movement. And that's the sort of thing that I would take apart and just do little two bar chunks where I do my left hand, my right hand, my left hand, my right hand. Let's do that again. And the repetition helps with eventual automation. So I started learning the harp quite late in my life. And I know I had the tendency at the beginning of my harp journey to go for music that perhaps I'm familiar with or even above my skill level. What are the advantages of going back to something like this where you're really focusing on the fundamentals? I think it helps to um, reconfirm what we know, or what we should know about our, our technique, about our fingering and about the way we approach music later on. So if we can practice all these things at an easy level and get good at um, if I go back to my octaves, get good at it there, then when you go to play the harder music, that, that's where your heart desires to be, then you've got some of those techniques in your toolbox, they're ready to pull out, you know what to do with them, and that will actually make your exploration of the more interesting, more challenging um, music a little bit easier because you've got the skills there and we, we keep falling back on the skills that we have from other pieces all the time so it's it's worth constantly exploring easier music and seeing what you can get out of it as well as harder music and something i do notice is that even when i'm playing the easier music now that i have more skill it actually sounds quite a bit better than when i was early on in my heart yeah. journey, which is quite fun to see yeah I think we need to really give ourselves a good pat on the back with how much we take on from different pieces of music because when you think about how many aspects of, of your body, your, your 
you're programming to drive this this creature here um you know it, it's hands it's arms it's brain it's it's rhythm it's melody it's the coordination of two parts of of you and, and you're looking at the music which is a little bit further away from your harp and then back at your heart all those things there's there's probably about 12 different functions happening at the same time uh, you can add to that if you're somebody who beats your foot that's another thing that your brain the program's having to you know put in there and um we want some of those things to be automatic you know the foot beating is often automatic that gives you time to focus on on hands so yeah the easy music just helps to um reiterate and reconfirm and build a solid foundation for for playing the harder stuff and that makes the harder stuff easier so i have noticed in this book there are some really uh fun performance directions such as boldly and uh, tranquil so they're quite a bit different than what we used to see in our sheet music. How do we interpret them and why did you decide to use these terms? Just for a bit of fun, really. Um, I've tried to keep the performance directions quite simple. There's a lot to think about in the music without having uh, a, a tempo change too many times through the music or uh, volume changes. So, you know, if you get a performance direction that's plucky or something like that, you, you, you make of it what you can. It's your, your artistic license that um, can take over here. When I, when I think that, um, when I think back, a lot of the performance directions we have like Moderato and Allegro have come from a long time ago. And they give us a general faster, slower sort of feeling, but um, we can do more than that. We wanna bring more than that into our music. We wanna play it in character. Um, so I just thought to be a bit different, we could have some uh, unique performance directions. Another really fun aspect of this book is uh, there are some really gorgeous illustrations that goes along with each piece of music. Tell us about them. So the illustrations were done by my amazing friend Moira Pagan and she is a harpist as well and had a few years of lessons with me and we realized that we had mutually um, beneficial skills and so we now swap artworks for music and her drawings are just stunning and they're all in color in this book which is really really neat and depict some of the um, characters from the tunes like the little red hen and um, there's the frog prince is on the on the cover but there's some really really cute ones so Moira is um, a part-time harpist part-time artist and her website is uh, www.moirapagan.com and there's some beautiful art artworks there and she have also illustrates uh, many of your other books as well. So that's a yes, fantastic. she does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky, really lucky. You are. And where can we find this uh, fairy, fairy tales on the harp collection? So this is at my harp shop, um, which is harp music online, and um, in the beginner collections tab. So there are a few, there's quite a few bits of music there. Um, you've just got to find the right place. It's a collection and it's for beginners. Well, thank you for introducing us to this uh, collection of yours. And I look forward to talking to you again about some other music because I know you're a very prolific composer. <laughs> I am. Lovely to talk to you, Victoria. Yes. See you again soon. Bye. Bye.